What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the last and final exam three of Physics 207. It's been a long journey, you know, making all these videos for y'all for 206 and 207. You know, it's been a, it's been a fun semester, but now we got to end it off strong. Um, so hopefully y'all can benefit from this video. I just want to say thank you guys for watching, subscribing, liking the video, commenting. And people that have DM me on Instagram asking for my work or trying to get me to explain, I always appreciate when people DM me and let me know how the videos are helping. So if you want to contribute and let me know how the videos have helped, you can message me on my Instagram. The link's in the description. And today, as you guys can see by the title, we're doing 2019 exam three. This one, uh, I struggled a little bit with it. Lots of things to memorize, but I was able to get all the questions for this one. So no need to DM me for answers for any of them. I'm going to be working all of them here and try to explain it as fast or as understandable as I can. So we're going to start off with number one. It's going to pop up on the screen right here. Um, a very thin, long wire has a current flowing from left to right of magnitude I1. A circular loop of thin wire has radius R in its center. It's a distance D from the straight wire. What current would have to be in the circular loop in order to have zero magnetic field as its center? So for this one, we're going to have to start off with finding the current in the straight wire and the current in the actual loop. So let me just draw that diagram real quick. So we're given that, and then we're given the current I1 for that, and then we're given the circle, and we know this is a distance D, and we know that right there is R, okay? So the first thing we're gonna start off with, let's start by writing off our currents. So the current in the straight wire is gonna be I1, current in straight wire, is going to be I1, and then current in loop or the circle, we're just going to name that as I. We're going to name that as I. So the next thing we have is <clears throat> radius. We know what radius is R. We're just writing everything we know. Radius is going to be R. Let's start off by writing the magnetic field formula, B dot dr. B dot dr is equal to mu naught i enclosed. So now we want to find b. We know dr of the circle is going to be 2 pi r. 2 pi r, so let's start by writing that. 2 pi r b is equal to mu naught i enclosed. Now we know b is equal to mu naught i enclosed over 2 pi r. <clears throat> Mu naught i enclosed over 2 pi r. So this one, we're calculating it for the, this is for the straight wire. This is for the straight wire. So it's going to be mu naught i over 2 pi r. And to replace the r, the r of this is going to be the d that we're looking for. So for this one, it's going to be mu naught I1 all over 2 pi D. And that is the current, that is the magnetic field for the line, for the wire. That's the magnetic field for the wire. Now, um, for the magnetic field of the, oh yeah, also forgot, don't forget to do the direction. So I heard the current, you put your thumb along the current and then you curl it so we can see it's coming out of the page. You put your curl along the thumb, it's curling out of the page. So it's going to be that sign right there. Now for the current of the circle, we're going to start off with the same thing. Me, we're going to use the Biot Savart's law. So it's going to be mu naught i over 4 pi, then we got ds cross r over r cubed, and that's the formula right there. And then after that, after you simplify, it's going to be mu naught i over 4 pi. Integral is going to be from 0 to 2 pi because it's a full circle. ds is just the area, or it's just the, ds is just r d theta. 
is just the, yeah, it's the area, r d theta, and then r is just gonna be r, which is the radius, all over r cubed. So after you take that, the integral of this is gonna be one over r two pi. After you integrate and, and put it in, substitute, it's gonna be one over r two pi. And then after that, this equals mu naught i over 2r. You multiply 2 pi over r, multiply that, the pi's go away. The 2 goes away, that becomes 2, and it's just mu naught over, this becomes 2, mu naught i over 2r. And that is the magnetic field for the circle. <clears throat> and the direction for the circle is the loop, so it's supposed to be the opposite direction. So the current is going this way, so you curl your fingers, you curl your fingers around, and the magnetic field is gonna go into the page for this, into the page. And I think the last part they want us to find, the current that would have to go the current that would have to go in order to have a magnetic field at the center. So all we have to do is just set it equal to each other and that's gonna be the answer. We're gonna to try to find I. So we're gonna to have to set it equal to each other. Um, so once we get that, it's gonna be mu naught I1 over two pi D is equal to mu naught I over two R, okay? So we're trying to find I, but we can eliminate some, mu naught go away. 2 goes away, so we're left with i is equal to i is equal to r times i1 over pi d. i times r1 over pi d, and that is the current that's needed to make it, that's the current that's needed to make it, um, make the magnetic field zero because you have to set it equal to each other and if they're equal to each other that's how it's going to be set equal to zero and that should be the final answer to get for number one okay um number two i feel like this one's going to be quick uh it's really simple um so i'm just going to pop on the screen right here it's going to pop on the screen right here um an infinitely long wire has a circular section of radius a a current I flows uniformly through the wire. Find the magnetic force that would be exerted on a positively charged particle Q if we're traveling with velocity V parallel to the axis of the plane, the distance H from the axis. So we're gonna need two formulas for this one. I already wrote down the first one from the last problem. The B dot dr is equal to mu naught I enclosed. And the second one we're gonna need is the force is equal to the charge V cross B. That's the second one we're going to need. So we're going to start off. So we're going to start off now. We're going to start off with finding the magnetic field, the B dot dr. So let's start off by trying to find it. So it's going to be B is equal to mu naught I enclosed over the dr, which is just the area. So we're gonna, try, we're gonna try to find the I enclosed now. To calculate I enclosed, it's gonna be I enclosed over I total is equal to, the I enclosed is gonna be pi R squared, arbitrary R, and then total is pi A squared. So now to find I enclosed, we're gonna multiply. I enclosed is equal to I total, which is just I pi R squared, over pi a squared, <clears throat> okay? Now we're gonna bring this into this equation. It's gonna be mu naught, and this right here is equal to two pi r, it's just the circumference. It's gonna be mu naught pi r squared over two pi r pi a squared, and I think mu naught, yeah, mu naught i, mu naught i, right there. <clears throat> so now you have all that. Now we're trying to solve for b, we're gonna simplify it. So 
let me see. Mu naught i. Okay, the one r, one r goes away. This is gonna become r. The pi's go away, and all we're left is mu naught i over two pi. Yep, one pi goes away. Two pi. Then you have a squared. And then you're left with the r, and that is the magnetic field. So now the r in this case, in this case, the r is gonna be the h because it says it's a distance h from the axis, so we're going to replace h with r. So the final magnetic field is mu naught i over 2 pi a squared h. Now since we have the v, we already know q and we know v, so now all we, do, all we got to do is just plug it in. So now the final equation for this is going to be q, v is given as v, and then it's going to be more, we're just multiplying everything mu naught i over 2 pi a squared and then h and then we're going to need the direction for the force i use the right hand rule but i do this method where you have this is going to be the force that's the magnetic field and this is going to be the current so when you put it on the diagram if you put it along the current the force points upward, but the magnetic field is the opposite way, so it's going to become downward. So the direction for force is going to be down in this problem, and that's it for number two. Let's move on to number three. Okay, now moving on to number three is going to pop up right here. Um, a very long wire carries a current. This a loop of wire with no dimensions is shown. At t equals zero, is being pulled that it moves with constant velocity to the right. If the loop contains a resistor, find the current in the loop, ignoring self-inductance. So let's just write out the formulas we're going to be needing. So we're going to need, I forgot the name of this formula, but it's the one that involves energy and the magnetic field. So we're going to, I think it's fair, yeah, this is Faraday's law. Faraday's law. So E dot dr is equal to negative d dt b dot da <clears throat> and then we're going to need v is equal to ir because we are given a resistor and then we're going to need the other one the b out savar's law b dot dr is equal to mu naught i enclosed because we are given a current in this also so now since we wrote down all our formulas let's start by drawing let's let me draw that thing real quick uh that that then that this is w this is h and this is the v and then this is the r and this distance is d and that's the wire it's on and this is i not cosine ding theta cosine that and then t and okay that's everything we're given okay first we're going to start off with finding the b dot da because we're going to need that to find the i later on so we're going to need to find b dot da so let's get started okay so first off, before we even get into that, we're going to need to take a small portion of this right here. So we're gonna name this dx dy. We're gonna be taking a small portion and we're gonna be integrating that. So let's get started. Um, okay, we're going to start off with this formula right here. Um, so let's start off. Uh, is going to be b times 2 pi r is equal to mu naught and then the i enclosed is what we're given the i naught cosine that t all over the 2 pi all over yeah it's equal to that yeah it's equal to that and then after that we're trying to solve for b which is going to be mu naught I naught cosine that t all over 2 pi r and that's what we're given and in this case the r that we're going to be using we're going to change our r to y 
is going to be mu naught i naught cosine t over 2 pi y. And for the direction for this, the current, where's the current going? The current is going this way. So this one is going to be pointing out of the page. And that's the B we have. Now since we have that, we're going to plug it in to this formula right here, the B dot DA. So let's start off with that. The DA is going to be dy dx. So we found the area. All we got to do is plug it in. So this is going to be from 0 to W, which is for the x-axis. And then we have from, where is it from? D to D plus H. That's where we're doing it from. We're doing it from D to D plus H. And then we're going to put this in there, mu naught I naught cosine t over 2 pi y. And double integral, this is going to be the y dy dx. So you have that. Now after that, we're going to integrate. This is going to be, <clears throat> after we integrate this, is going to equal to mu naught i naught cosine okay it gives me mu naught i naught cosine this t and then w over 2 pi ln y d plus h and then d this is after you take the integral of the first one and the second one. It's just going to be the x's. There's no x's, so it's going to, we're just multiplying by w. And this one is going to stay, these are all constant. The only thing that's different, the only thing we're integrating is the y. So the y is integrated, and it's 1 over y, so it's going to be ln y. So now after you finish that, it's going to be, the final formula is going to be mu naught i naught cosine that t w over 2 pi ln d plus h over d okay now that is the b dot da that's this part of the equation next we're going to do v is equal to okay now we're going to be taking the negative d dt we're going to take this part now of this we're taking the negative integral negative derivative of this so we're going to do the v induced is equal to negative d dt and then negative d dt all of this so when you take like since I, since I don't want to write it again I'm going to do negative d dt and it's going to be the flux of b so when you do that it's going to be equal to mu naught i naught w all over 2 pi and then sine that t and then ln d plus h over d and this is all equal to i r and then to find the i, all you're doing is dividing all this by r. Right there, you're dividing all that by r. And that should be the final answer that you get for this question. And that's how you solve this question right here. Yeah, it's going to be all that over r. Or you could have just put all over 2 pi r right there. But that's the equation. That's the equation right there. Okay, yeah, everything seems right. That's it for number three, and let's move on to number four. Okay, so final question number four, the longest and the hardest one. Um, so this one is a circuit one. I already drew it out, and I already wrote down the formula we're going to be needing just to save time. So you guys can see the question is going to pop up right here in the bottom. And we're trying to find the charge of the capacitor plates as a function of time, assuming it was uncharged. So whenever they say ignore self-inductance, that means the L is equal to zero. That is self-inductance, so we don't have to deal with that formula. So what we're going to be using is all these formulas right here. 
So we're going to start off with finding the BA. We're going to start with finding the BA. As you guys can see, I already simplified the integral is just the area times the B. So the B they gave us. So the B is B naught and then alpha T times HW. B naught alpha T times HW. Okay. So now after that, um, we're going to take the negative derivative of that. It's going to be negative d dt and of b naught alpha t hw. After you take the derivative of that, it's just going to be negative b naught alpha hw. Negative b naught alpha hw. Okay, so after that, now we're going to do the e dot dr portion of that. Um, so let's do over here. e dot dr is equal to, what we're going to do, we're doing the same thing we did last section or last test. So I'm going in the counter, I'm going in the, I want my direction to be in the clockwise direction and my current is going in the same direction. So we're going to start off this way, this way, this way. It's going to be positive i r. And then we're gonna go this way, this way, this way, pass by V, V, we're not putting it in there. And then we're gonna to go to the capacitor. It's going the opposite way of the actual direction. So it's gonna be negative Q over C. And that is the E dot dr. So now since we have both sides, now all we gotta do is set them equal to each other and solve for the values. So now what we have is gonna be negative B naught alpha HW is equal to I R minus Q over C. Okay, now since we're given that, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to set put everything on one side and then set them equal to zero, and then we're gonna solve for the stuff one by one. So we already know what I is. I is negative dq over dt because the I is leaving the positive, so it's getting weaker and weaker, so the, so the charge is getting weaker. So we chose the negative version of that. So this right here is going to be negative duq, dq over dt. And that's the only thing we're going to substitute. So let's move everything to the left side. It's going to be negative or it's going to be positive, right? So yeah, it's going to be positive, but when it goes this side, it's going to be negative. DQ over DT R plus Q over C. And then you have plus B naught alpha HW is equal to zero. Okay, I think that is right right there. So now we can just simplify that, divide everything by negative. So it's going to be R DQ over DT minus Q over C minus B naught alpha HW is equal to zero. And I think that is it. Actually, wait, let me see. When you move this to this side, it's gonna be positive DQ. So it's to be positive DQ over DT R and then positive Q over C and this is supposed to be negative. Okay, yeah, that's supposed to be negative. And then when you divide by negative, this is gonna become Okay, yeah, I think it was already right. Yeah, it was already right. It was already right from the second step. Okay, it was already right from the second step. It's R D Q D T plus Q over C minus all that is equal to zero. So now we're gonna use what we're given. Uh, we know based on what we know about first order into first order derivatives um, so the charge at this place q h is going to be equal to a e negative beta t that formula is just something universal you have to remember it and the beta for this is always one over rc so now we're going to take the derivative of that dq over dt is going to be equal to, so chain rule, we're going to be using chain rule, it's going to be negative 
a e negative beta t okay now after that we're going to substitute values in we know what dq dt and we're going to substitute values in okay so we're going to substitute this dq dt into there so it's going to become r negative a e negative beta negative beta t and then plus q over c we know what q is i think we know what q is right okay so we want all over c q we're going to keep it the same and then minus b naught alpha hw is equal to zero and we're trying to solve it for a so we're going to set the charge is going to be negative a over c minus b naught minus b naught alpha h w is equal to zero and now we know from this we know a is equal to negative b naught c alpha h w so now since we have a um, we're gonna find i think now since we have a i think we have everything we need to need we have everything that we need to solve it so the final answer is going to be we're going to plug everything into this right here we're going to plug everything into this right here so it's going to be we're going to move this this q is going to be plugged in there this dq over dt is going to be plugged in over there and i think those are the only two things you're going to be substituting in and after that Okay, so the final answer that we're going to be doing is going to be R and then DQ, DT. We know what A is. A is negative B naught C alpha HW and then beta is 1 over RC and then E negative t over r c and that is dq dt and then it's going to be plus q is a e negative beta t which is you just substitute everything again because i don't want to write everything out a e negative beta t and then all over c then it's minus beta na h w and that is all equal to zero and then what you're solving for is going to be one all over cq cq over c okay um yeah you're not supposed to substitute it back in Okay, so it's going to be 1, 1 over C, Q, 1 over C, Q, and you're solving for the Q here. You're solving for the Q here, and I think another formula you're going to need to write also is Q is equal to CV, and with all that, you should be able to find the answer that they got. They simplified, they t simplified it, took the simplified it took all the act the addition and subtraction and they were able to find the answer for number four and this one was tough i, I even i i don't want to work everything out but this is like the main steps that you're going to need to solve it thank you guys for watching 2019 exam three i'm going to be doing 2018 right after this i'll see you guys in the next video